Hey guys, hi, how are you? Welcome to another underperforming video on YouTube. My name is Juan Carlos and today we're in Jacumba, California in the desert because we want to talk about the off-road capabilities of my 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. Does he have any? We're about to find out. First of all, let's find out what the current driver has to say about what a real SUV is. This is from an article found in currentdriver.com. What is an SUV? According to buyacar.com, SUV is a loose term that traditionally covers a broad range of vehicles with four-wheel drive that can be taken off-road and have the feel of a lighter truck. While the term SUV can be applied to larger vehicles such as the Range Rover or the Chevrolet Suburban and Jeep-like SUVs, it can also apply to smaller vehicles that don't have four-wheel drive system and have a minimal capability of going off-road, like the Honda CRV and crossover SUVs. The sport utility is more than just a technical term for the SUV. It also means that the vehicle can get things done and has a quality made for the outdoors, such scaling different terrains. Per cars.com, in the United States and several other countries, the SUV has been classified as a light truck rather than a car. In terms of how the SUV looks and feels, it resembles a combination of a truck, a minivan, and the average American family car. Most modern SUVs have four to five doors and accommodate families, while historically, off-roaders only had two doors. Examples, the original Ford Bronco and the International Scout, among others. SUVs combine the storage and hauling of a pickup truck with the comfort of a station wagon, explains all car leasing. The combination includes large interior spaces and two or three rows of seating. SUVs give their owners flexibility in transporting people and cargo, with all the space in an SUV. While SUVs don't have the best fuel economy, says Autos.com, they were originally built to enable a vehicle to pass over rugged terrain without scraping the underside of the vehicle. This design gives them a higher center of gravity and seating positions. They also have a strong engine and powerful towing capabilities. Nowadays, SUVs are divided into two main types. One type is for hauling heavy loads or going off-road, such as the Toyota 4Runner, while the other is known for its sleek looks and secure handling. Both types can tackle slippery road conditions and shallow standing water like the Ford Flex. In 1977, the Lada Niva, a relatively compact SUV type vehicle, was the predecessor of the crossover SUV that we know today. Per Autolist, until the sales success of the 1984 Jeep Grand Cherokee XJ, SUVs with a unibody frame remain rare. It wasn't until the 1993 Jeep Grand Cherokee that all Jeep SUV models had started using a unibody construction. The term SUV was first used in brochures for the full-size 1974 Grand Cherokee SJ. So now that we know what an SUV should be, how about we take this puppy to the desert, some minor trails, to see if he has any off-road capabilities. Are you ready? Let's go. This is a pretty civilized road. It's a dirt road. I have some experience driving off-road and I have confirmed my idea that this vehicle is not for off-roading for many reasons. The suspension is very stiff. Also, it has very long, very little wheel travel. Real off-road vehicles, and I'm not talking about like hardcore. certain characteristics that make them a little bit more off-road friendly such as a little bit more ground clearance for sure also the wheel travel is more and the tires are more have more sidewall which helps with that vibration um, this is a road that you can actually drive in a car and that's why we're here another thing that makes this not be a real SUV is approach angles notice how the fact that this vehicle is so low makes it really hard for this vehicle to approach any minor hurdle on the road. We're gonna keep driving, see if we can find a little bit better of a setup that I can show you how this car has very limited off-road capabilities. What do we have here to our right? So we're gonna get off this road right now just to see a little bit more of an even terrain. See how this car does. 
Notice how as soon as I get off the main road, any uneven terrain and this car just doesn't have the right access angles to be able to take on minor irregularities on the road. Also, these tires being such low profiles offer no grip. So if I were to get stuck in sand, as much as this all wheel drive system is really good, so there's no grip. There's not enough. I can lower the, in a regular off-road vehicle, I can lower the pressure on the tires. This one, these tires don't offer any of that. So I'm not about to damage my vehicle to prove a point. I hope you understand that what I'm trying to tell you is that this is not an off-road vehicle. This is not an SUV. To me, it's more like a tall hatch. Another issue with this car is the very little ground clearance. So if you were to get stuck in the sand, it's very easy to get high center with this. So it doesn't matter if you have the best all-wheel drive system, the, you have no traction, you're not gonna be able to get out of sand with this car. Notice these overhangs, they're just too low, the access angles non-existent. You shouldn't have rode this car. on this little trail, no loose sand. Remember that this vehicle has a feature that offers you help when you need to get out of sand, but being so low, anything will get this vehicle high center. Definitely not a good choice to drive in the sand. Oh, no trespassing. Okay. Ves, ahí ve alguien, okay. Que fuera ponchando por pendejo. By the way, remember guys, the Tesla Model Y does not come with a repair kit or a spare tire, so it's gonna be a very long day before a Tesla service truck finds you, and even worse, if it's a remote location. I don't mind exchanging my own tires, and I like cars that come with a spare or a repair kit. This one doesn't have neither, so think of that before you go off-roading. So as you saw, this vehicle is not comfortable off-roading. It's, it's not meant for that. It's got an excellent all-wheel drive system. It's got the two ranges, like an SUV should have, a 4x4 SUV should have. You have the low-end torque for the sport uh, mode, and then you have the chill. So in theory, that sport mode gives you so much torque that it's gonna be, be able to bail you out of tough sand. Unfortunately, the low center of gravity in this vehicle, it makes it almost unusable for the sand. The overhangs, they're small. Unfortunately, they're too low as well. And the access angles, they're very limited as well because they're just too low. This is a low vehicle. Along with the profile of the tires, they offer no absorption for road imperfections. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your support. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.